Despite what the haters might say, Mike Tomlin absolutely deserved his extension with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We got all that and much more for you on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? And welcome into another episode of Locked On NFL, bringing you all the biggest stories from around the National Football League every single day. And it is Tuesday, so you've got Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on your favorite social media, myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola. On today's episode of Locked On NFL, we're going to give you our yike and our likes from the week. Take a look at the things that we liked and that we didn't like from the week uh, before here. Leading off, of course, with some good news for the Chiefs and B.J. Thompson. We're also going to take a look at the uh, New York Giants. Tight end Darren Waller expected to retire. What does it mean for the young stars that the Giants have just begun to invest in? And to kick us all off on today's episode, we're going to take a look at Mike Tomlin. Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin coming together for a three-year extension. Why he absolutely deserves it we appreciate you very much for making us your first listen of the day every day and for being an every day or here on the locked on nfl podcast which is a proud part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. make every moment more you get 200 dollars in bonus bets right now if you win your five dollar bet as a new customer that's 200 bucks in bonus bets by just winning a five dollar bet head to fanduel.com slash locked on to get started so luke um mike tomlin pittsburgh steelers head coach ends up getting a three year extension i think he absolutely deserves this we're going to hear from our good friend chris carter here in a moment but I think this should was a no-brainer. He was going into his last year of his contract. We know the way that coach contracts work in the NFL. Uh, Nothing yeah, is guaranteed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But you, do you, if you're, are you like me in this tour? You kind of, you, you at least, in, you at least appreciate the symbolism in getting this extension done. Like, I think if it were meaningful, I would still agree with it, but it kind of isn't mm-hmm. like the thing, two things to know about coach contracts that, that people often get mixed up one they don't count against the salary cap some people think like whoa how where's all that money coming it won't affect the players or anything like that and then two um it's basically custom because it doesn't count against the salary cap it's still really flexible it it guarantees nothing it doesn't mean anything um other than you don't want a coach being in 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 a contract here and i honestly can't really remember the last time a head coach like coached on a contract year that'll happen sometimes with assistants with position coaches and stuff but it just sort of doesn't happen so it's an automatic thing and it doesn't really matter how good of like this doesn't mean that mike tomlin's seat is any warmer or cooler than you previously thought it was i don't think it should be particularly warm but if you disagree with me this news probably shouldn't change your mind yeah yeah that's exactly the way that i would look at uh that part of it too but i i do disagree with the idea that if if there is anybody out there that does believe that his seat will be warm or should be warm because uh, i mean we've seen it year in and year out people calling for mike tomlin uh to be moved on from mike tomlin to be fired things like that i always kind of looked at that as being uh, a little premature i'm going to tell you why i think so here in just a moment but let's go to chris carter who highlights why sometimes the hate around mike tomlin feels like it's a bit uh too much from time to time. If you're tying all of the playoff failures problems to Mike Tomlin, I, I think that you're a bit misguided in doing that. And I've all I've said I've said for a while, I think Mike Tomlin, it would be different if there were lots of other people out there that were in the business, not random people in media who don't like Mike Tomlin for whatever reason, not people who, you know, who, who want to start something on Twitter. But it would be different if there were other coaches. If like Andy Reid came out and said, I don't respect that guy, or if you know, or if former players came out and said and said, like, man, that guy, that guy does not get it done at all. Like if there was if there was a group of ex Steelers like Troy Polamalu was like, yeah, I don't I don't mess with Tomlin or, you know, if, or if it, or if the leaders on the team didn't respect him, if T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, Mickey Fitzpatrick, if, if those guys who are, you know, about their business football players had problems with Mike Tomlin. 
they would, you know, there would be obvious issues, especially when the team has hit their hard times. And that's what I kind of want to talk about is because I think a big reason why Mike Tomlin's getting extended is because he has guided the Steelers. He has pulled them through some really tough times where they should have hit rock bottom. And, if, and the fact that they didn't hit rock bottom and now we're starting to see there's excitement building. There's a, there's a young core being a, a new young nucleus being put together and there's some belief in the team that they can take some steps forward and rise up back in the ranks in the AFC. Mike Tomlin got them to this point. Chris Carter at Locked on Steelers there giving us a little bit of insight in terms of like where some of that hate comes from. Playoff record 8 and 10 over the course of Mike Tomlin's coaching career so far. But that doesn't feel like it's enough, Luke, to really hold against Mike Tomlin, who still has not had a losing season his entire career going into his 18th right. coaching season. I mean, that's pretty spectacular, man. Like the way I want to think about this kind of thing is like, look, the, the Steelers are in some phase of a rebuild. They're in like doing their thing, right? Mm -hmm. And when that is over and the Steelers feel like they have a roster ready to contend again, do you trust Mike Tomlin at the helm of that? Mm -hmm. The fact that he went nine and eight with rosters that should have gone three and 14. Right. Trying to hold that against him, you have to do some really, really backwards math in your head. And it kind of feels like you're taking a conclusion and working backwards. But honestly, when the Steelers do have the talent, to contend like if they don't have the talent to contend none of this matters but when when they right. eventually do have the talent to contend like this like i don't get it with rebuilds sometimes why does it have to be a different guy head coaching the rebuild you know right like right. this build is over it got old roethlisberger got old antonio brown went insane like it, it that build <laughs> ended and right. if we're gonna question why the steelers seem to have sort of plateaued why they seem a little stuck in the mud Mike Tomlin might genuinely be the last human being in that building I would look at. Like, I would look mm -hmm. at probably the entire roster first, which makes me think maybe we should look at the guy that built it. Like, we got to, with some GM questions, maybe. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, I don't know what ingredients he got, but the guy doing the cooking has very clearly done a good job. And yeah. that tells us that when there's a more stacked pantry, that's somebody that you trust in charge of it. That is the calculus here. And I think too often we reduce sports down to like, well, eight and 10 in the playoffs. He must only be an eight and 10 coach. And it's like, you need to think harder than that if you're going to actually try to have an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on top of all that, this is still a Super Bowl winning head coach that we're talking about as well. Yeah. It's been a while yeah. since that Super Bowl win and everything like that I understand that. But even still, uh, having won one, uh, does mean something when it comes to uh, these types of things. I, I watched that with Sean Payton for years and years here in New Orleans. I mean, he won you know a Super Bowl 2009 season, and then they had you know a, a, a string of seven and nine losing seasons, which Mike Tomlin's never had. And there was never a question about whether or not Sean Payton should or shouldn't be the New Orleans Saints head coach. Yet we get these questions all the time uh, about. Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I get it when you're an organization that has only had three head coaches in 55 years, Chuck Knoll, you've got Mike Tomlin. And of course you had Bill Cower in between uh, you expect excellence. And, and yeah. I completely understand that, but I don't think that and Mike Tomlin is, has been, has lacked for excellence. And this is how the Steelers have gotten that excellence, by the yep. way, they're the only team that yep. behaves like this. And they're also the, the only team that is consistently as good and as relevant. Everybody yep. else has their moments where they get to be the laughing stock, and the Steelers don't, and Steelers fans take that for granted, I think. Uh, yep. That yep. is a good thing. Don't forget, being bad sucks, and you don't have to experience <laughs> that. Congratulations to you, and thank you to Mike Tomlin for that. Yep, yep, big time. Big time. Coming up next, let's take a look at what's going on with the New York Giants. Uh, Darren Waller, tight end, expected to retire. And who does this offense turn to? Where do they go? Boy, it sure feels uh, a little bit uh, disappointing right now in the Big Apple. Let's break it all down with some help for Patricia Train of Locked on Giants here in just a moment as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Today's episode of Locked On NFL is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And they've got all kinds of really cool promos going on all the time. Right now, if you are new, you can go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On, sign up there, and get $200 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. For example, right now, the Dallas Mavericks are point and a half favorites to win game three of the NBA Finals at home. If you do take that action and you win it, you would get 200 bucks back in bonus bets on a $5 bet. That's 40 to 1 odds on a point and a half favorite. You're not going to find numbers like that anywhere else. You can also find uh, anything, you know, home run props for baseball. You can find NFL futures, who's going to win what division, that kind of stuff, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and go for that $200 bet back in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, once again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. We appreciate you very much making us your first listen of the day here on the show. Don't forget to go and check out Locked On Sports today's 24-7 stream as well. If you're tired of listening to those other networks, all the yelling and screaming and having to turn your volume down, you can make the switch to Locked On Sports today right now or at least after the show, geez, at least finish the show up uh, yeah. and then go and check them out. Cause they'll make sure that it's all programmed for you. All the biggest stories from around the world of sports from the local experts that know them the best that actually like, you know, cover the teams. You can find that on the locked on sports today, YouTube channel, as well as on the free Amazon fire TV channels at part locked on podcast network, your team every day. Um, Okay, our, our next big story here today is Darren Waller, the uh, New York Giants tight end, formerly of the Raiders, was traded uh, just a year ago, uh, is announcing his retirement uh, as well as, uh, you know, singing some songs, all these other things. Well, he didn't actually announce his retirement. Here's the thing with that. But news came out that he w- is expected to yes. retire. And, that the and, and this has been circulating this. for a while, too. So it shouldn't yeah, come as yeah. a huge surprise to anybody. Yeah, no huge surprise at all. But uh, it does, you know, kind of get you looking at the New York Giants going, okay, so just like reexamining the roster, where do things go? And this this was this was the impact for me, Luke, is that I, I saw, okay, so Darren Waller is retiring, and then I go to their roster and I go, okay, so where are they going to find some production? Not that Darren Waller was going to run production for them, but I was just curious about like, okay, so who are the other weapons? I'm sure they'll be fine. And it feels pretty devoid of options in the big apple, which is not what I was expecting beyond, of course, uh, some play, some pieces from their rookie class that I really liked. But outside yeah. of that, like I'm, I'm a little concerned about the giants. I mean, what was this build supposed to be with Brian Dable? It's supposed to be Daniel Jones right. and Saquon Barkley. And then Brian mm-hmm. Dable like cooking up stuff for Daniel Jones. Now there's no Saquon Barkley. You let him walk. He ended up at a division rival. You decided that that wasn't worth it. And you use the fifth overall pick on Malik neighbors. Good luck. Maybe that works. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't still struggle and I have struggled for the last couple of years to see the vision for this offense as a completed yeah. thought unless you really, really, really buy into Daniel Jones, which I guess the Giants have. Good for you. But what we need to see is guys like, you know, Jalen Hyatt's to really, mm-hmm. you know, take take a role. You, you need to see a completed thought here, and, and I think this is the problem when you have an offense that's predicated around two players. One of them leaves, and you're kind of left with a rookie and nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, and now it feels like the Giants are just kind of repeating history all over again to where you know they kind of have one weapon, then they've got one weapon, and then now yeah. they've got one weapon again, and this just feels like, uh, what is it? The whole like insanity thing, right? To where it's like yeah. you're repeating the same thing, expecting different results. Um, and 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 Patricia Trainer over at Lost on Giants kind of spoke about it a little bit too about sort of the impact of this move with the expected retirement of Darren Waller and how much more pressure it puts on Malik Neighbors and what it could mean for the expectations around him and how they could match up with uh, another former LSU wide receiver that went and uh, had a major impact uh, in New York. It is now putting more pressure on, like I said, Malik Neighbors. It's putting more pressure on Daniel Jones. It's putting more pressure on Brian Dable, who looks like he's going to take over the play calling to overcome this because, you know, we've seen this so many times before, folks. The last time we saw something kind of similar um, in terms of, you know, having one guy that you had to account for was Odell Beckham Jr., when he was with the Giants, he was the offense for a number of years. And when teams figured out how to take him out, 
that was it. That was all she wrote. The Giants just didn't have enough firepower to compete. You know, we saw it with Saquon Barkley for a little bit. And now we're going to probably see it with Malik Neighbors unless somebody on that Giants offense steps up and brings the goods. So you mentioned Jalen Hyatt, you know, is one of those guys that could potentially step up and bring the goods, as Patricia Trainer of Locked on Giants says there. I mean, who else are we looking at here? I guess Devin Singletary out of the backfield could be one. But... Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of role players. Yeah. And so outside of Neighbors, I struggle to see who are you supposed to prepare for. And by the way, Neighbors right. is a rookie. Now rookie wide receivers yeah. can pop off, sure. But like, what if he doesn't? What if he takes four weeks to really get a handle on the playbook and you can't even really rely on him? What is your offense made of? Is it Daniel Jones dragging people along to nothing? I mean, you you need to be a higher caliber of, of quarterback than that. So yeah. I don't really believe in the Giants right now. I mean, I like I, I that Hard maybe to. is harsh, but like, what is the vision? <laughs> I just I, just, right. I, I, I yeah I don't I don't really get what they're going for without Saquon Barkley. I think I guess they made the value decision, but you can have all the great value efficiencies in the world. It's not going to make two and fifteen sting any less. Yeah, yeah. The the thing that I look at here is that like it feels like the most promising players that they have. And Luke, stop me if you've heard this before because you have. Um, the most promising players that it feels like they have on their offense right now are all rookies. It's all the rookie class, and the only reason why it's promising is because right. there's potential there. We, we haven't, haven't seen, seen them seen fail them yet. Be bad yet? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, and like and so. If you have like, look, okay, Andrew Thomas, love him. Great. Like they've right. got trenches. So I'll get like, I'll give them that. Like, but if, I mean, if Evan Neal had worked out better, if Kadarius Tony had just like lived up to not even like become, you know, the great superstar, like obviously if you slam dunk all your draft picks, you'll be a good team. But like, if you just right. had Kadarius Tony as like as a role player and not a guy that had to be ousted from the organization after, you know, a year and a half. If those players had turned out okay, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We say, wow, they've got the bookend mm -hmm. tackles. They've spent so much on their weapons. They're, you know, they've surrounded Daniel Jones. Like, this is what they've tried to do. And it's just worked so poorly that they had to lean really hard into Saquon Barkley for all of those years. And then they let that crutch walk because they wanted to save cap space, I guess. Yeah. And, and now it's like, well, I, you don't even have Sterling Shepard anymore. Like, right. <laughs> I guess yeah. I, hopefully Jalen Hyatt takes the next step. Do we all expect that? What are you supposed to do? Yeah, it, it's it's really hard to because, again, even when we talk about Jalen Hyatt, we're still talking about, what, a second-year guy? And everything. So we're yeah. talking about like, or, or a guy with you know with going into second year of experience or whatever. And he wasn't or, good at Texas. He, or, or Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, you're right. Like, he, he was – and even that Tennessee offense was so, like, get outside the numbers and you had three rules. And and all your rules were based on the leverage of the of the defensive back. Yeah. And Hendon Hooker it was, was seven just, on seven ball. You know, yeah. Like it was it was I mean, it was fun. It was Josh Heupel's system there, the the head coach and offensive sort of play you know scheme guy there. But like Unserious that's really program. what it was that made them. You know what I mean? Relegate it's, that's them. not gonna translate. So it it's tough. It's tough. It's hard to see like where this goes. And then you've got wide receiver Malik Willis. You've got tight end Theo Johnson. You've got running back Tyrone Tracy. Those are the three big rookie skill position players over on the offensive side. And the odds are, just based on the way that the draft works, one or two of those guys is not going to pan out. And potentially, all three could not pan out. And then you're just kind of stuck in the same place. And I haven't seen enough from head coach Brian Dable to make me feel like him going in and taking over the offensive play calling is going to help this team in any way, especially with Daniel Jones still at the helm. I, yeah. Like, I hate to be presumptuous. Lots of things can be surprising, but it does kind yeah. of feel like I'm just, we're just sitting here and waiting for this whole thing to get like cleared out and for them to go and do a full rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. In two years, and, they're going to have a new head coach and like a rookie or QB they're excited about. And they go, oh, man, remember the Dan Daniel Jones era? That sucked. <laughs> yeah. That's basically, <laughs> feels like we're just biding time uh, until that point. And that, that stinks. That stinks because yeah. the NFL is better. When the Giants are better. Um, all right, coming up next, Donatel. <laughs> coming up next, we're gonna take a look at our yike and our like from the week, leading off with some good news for the Kansas City Chiefs and BJ Thompson. Got that coming up for you here as we continue on with today's episode of Locked On NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.
All right, y'all, wrapping up this episode of Locked on NFL with our yike and our like of the week. Uh, this is where we go over what we liked, what we didn't like from the week ahead. And I'm feeling a little positive today, Luke. So I've actually got two likes. I don't really have a yike this week. Uh, I almost had three likes because I wanted to give a shout out to the Vikings New Jerseys. Uh, but I will leave that for an episode of Locked on Vikings. Uh, so uh, I'm going to lead us off with a different like here. Uh, defensive lineman B.J. Thompson uh, suffered a seizure and then cardiac arrest during a special teams meeting uh, just just last week. It led to the team, you know, getting rid of, you know, canceling a day of practices during OTAs and stuff like that. Um, and obviously very scary moment for everybody and what has been, uh, you know, just I don't know, just an increased look at um health and safety across the NFL. This wasn't a situation where he was out there running in the heat, got hit, anything like that. This was no, during a special teams there. meeting. Like, Yeah, you just never know. And and I'll, I'll peel the curtain back a little bit on a little bit of personal life stuff. I've been I've battled seizures since I was probably about 13, 14 years old. Um, and it can be scary, man, like when they come up out of nowhere like that, like you're sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden it's like, hey, guys, something's not right. Um, it can be really scary. But – Despite all that, he is responsive, he's talking, he's all good, so it seems that everything is going well. Um, and shout out to medical staff, trainers, the Giants, everybody, or excuse me, the, the Chiefs, um, the, the medical staff at the local hospital, like everybody for just kind of being there to make sure that this went um, much better than, than it could have. Uh, and so BJ Thompson and the Chiefs sounded like some really, really good news there. Yeah. And I, I mean, in a sense, it's lucky that it happens at the facility where you have access to like right. medical resources down the hall um, that, you know, will be very like well equipped to handle that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, both of my yikes and likes are in tertiary football leagues. I'll start with my yike, which mm -hmm. goes to the United Football League St. Louis Battlehawks, who <laughs> led the XFL conference of the UFL for the entire season. Fell apart at the end, uh, stumbled down the stretch, but still ended up getting home field advantage in the XFL Conference Championship. One game for the right to go to the to the to the big one. All right, to to go win the second ever UFL Championship. See if somebody can knock off the Birmingham Stallions, who are ridiculously overpowered, so and it's very clearly an unbalanced league right now because there's only eight teams in it. Right, uh, playing the rival San Antonio Brahmas, absolutely lay an egg. Cannot get out of their own way. Penalties Jeez. look. I, I latched on to the Battle Hawks because their name is cool. After the LA Wildcats went defunct, I didn't have anybody near me at all uh, geographically to root for. So I went for St. Louis. I thought they were cool. And I think it's really, really awesome that St. Louis as a city has embraced them as their football team. Like they mm -hmm. genuinely like they, they have had more fans than I've ever seen in a spring league ever. Like they, it, they really are building something there that is really really cool but you can't go in front of your home at home fans in a semi-final game and just lay an egg too vikingsy for me yike <laughs> that's a good that that's a good yike I, I did love wade phillips at the end of that game going up to wide receiver hakeem butler and being like hey i'm calling everyone that i still talk to at the nfl and telling them mm. to get a look at you and actually and hakeem he's butler working out for the panthers got a visit yep already yeah. got it and he was uh, he, a guy that's he should have probably gotten some work, so, so like a, a, a true shot last year. He yeah. played so well for the Agreed. Battle Hawks. He's been like a total stud there. Uh, and whatever was in his way in Arizona seems like he's maybe worked through it, maybe just needed a little bit more of a chill environment to like work through some of whatever it was that was holding him back. Uh, and, and I think it's it's time for him to get up to the next level and see if he can't take another crack at a roster. Yeah. Yeah, supremely talented dude, crazy athletic, especially for his size, all mm -hmm. that. I hope it works out for him. Really, really do. All right, so let's stick here with the tertiary football leagues and get to your like next. Yeah, now I want to turn to the Women's Football Alliance, uh, which is the latest iteration of like professional women's football, and the Minnesota Vixen, who have been playing professional football since 1999, uh, and right. they've been on an absolute tear. So last year they get to the conference championship and lose because they're a Minnesota uh, a Minnesota sports team. That's kind of law. <laughs> That's um, the way it goes. Kinda but the way it goes. they come out week one, they lose by one point uh, to the team they lost to in the, in the conference championship, of course. And since that, listen to these scores, Ross, uh, 64 to 30 
against the Goodness. Dallas Mustangs. They hang 64 on a team. Goodness. 55 nothing against the Iowa Phoenix. 42-34 win. nothing? Like zero? Yes, and then another shutout two weeks later against the Nebraska Pride. So they've got two shutouts. They've got a 60-burger in there. They are putting up Goodness. video game numbers. <laughs> Shoutouts to the Minnesota Vixen. Maybe this is finally their year. That's awesome. I love that. I love all these these additional football leagues. I guess I do have a yike. I guess my yike is the Arena Football League for like falling off the face of the earth before they even got a chance to reboot because it was my one and only chance to get the New Orleans voodoo back in my life. And now I'm hearing about all these other football leagues. I'm like, man, I could have gotten a little bit of arena football going on, but that's really cool. That is excellent. Minnesota Vixen, shout out. 1999 too. That's awesome. What a history. Yeah. There's been a lot of like attempts at like women's football leagues. There was the women's professional football league that lasted all the way till 2007. And then like some Mm -hmm. other ones, this one's been around since 2017. Obviously, it's really difficult to get like as we've seen with all the spring leagues, too. It's just difficult to get a tertiary football league off the ground and get something sustainable out of it, especially because the women's league doesn't have the we can be a feeder to the NFL thing. So it's difficult to have that. It's like hard. I, I haven't been able to find a way to like watch a game live. So I've only been able to like follow it scoreboard style. But uh, I'm still interested and I'm still rooting for the Vixen big time. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Color me a Vixen fan moving forward. Um, all right. I'll give you my, my other, like my other, like we talked about, um, we talked about Mike Tomlin going into his 18th year as the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach, but he's got nothing, nothing on Mercedes Lewis. Who's going into his 19th year as an NFL tight end. All right. 40 years old. The only remaining active player from the 2006 NFL draft class in its entirety, right? I made a joke earlier. 2006 was also when Reggie Bush was drafted by the New Orleans Saints. It took longer. It will take. It has taken longer for Mercedes Lewis to retire than it will have taken for Reggie Bush to get his Heisman back. That's insane. Like he is playing way 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 deeper into his career than we're accustomed to uh discussing at this position and i think it's awesome i think it's awesome we are closer to 2040 than we are to 2006 that's true yeah 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 and he's 40 that's, years that's old a, a different world in 2006 yeah. i mean nuts that's bush administration right <laughs> right absolutely insane were we even in we weren't even at iphone jet right no, that's a pre iPhone yeah, career. This is pre iPhone. Yeah. That was Sean Payton's first season as a Saint. Yep. That was conference championship yep. up against the Rex Grossman led Bears. That's right. Devin yeah. Hester's rookie year. I mean, it, like, yeah. it's you could go back to like players drafted then or what, like Larry Fitzgerald was a third year player when he was drafted. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Right. He was just starting to take off. <laughs> like, goodness, man. How cool is that? And I hope that it goes well. You know what else is kind of crazy about Mercedes Lewis as well? Um, so going into his 19th season, he only has four seasons without a touchdown reception in his career. Only four. And that wow. includes three years ago with the Green Bay Packers. Um, yeah, yeah, he had like, like depth seasons and like bounce between yep. teams and practice squad weirdness sometimes where he like yep. just didn't get on the field. Yeah. So he had 2021. He had 2018 also with the Green Bay Packers. He had 2015 with Jacksonville, and then he had 2011 with Jacksonville. Um, that wow. were the only not no touchdown seasons. He also had a 10-touchdown season on only eight games the year before one of those touchdown-less seasons. So pretty incredible career for Mercedes Lewis. That's going to be... That's going to be something when he calls it quits and when he finally hangs them up. But we don't have to worry about that right now (laughs) because he's coming back for season 19 with the Chicago Bears. And I love it. Only three teams, too, by the way. Only three teams. Jacksonville and Green Bay for a really long time. And then here recently with the Chicago Bears. So sadly, I'm obligated to hate him then. Screw that guy. You got to dislike it. You got to dislike it. Sorry, Mercedes. (laughs) All right. I wish you you very. (laughs) we appreciate you very much for joining us for another episode of locked on nfl don't forget to come back tomorrow james and chris will be here answering all the biggest questions from around the nfl and you'll probably get a lot more uh insight from chris as well on the mike tomlin extensions make sure you come through for that and then of course luke and i will see you again here next week thanks as always for being a part of allowing us to be a part of your day uh and for being an everydayer 
and for making us your first listen. For Luke Braun, I am Ross Jackson. You can find us on your favorite social media at Luke Braun NFL, at Ross Jackson Nola. We'll see you again here soon on Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.